What's going on, you guys? Frost here, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I'll be doing an in depth Evelyn jungle guide. Evelyn, right now, is a very, very good jungler. She has a lot of clear speed, she has a lot of pressure on the map, especially in solo queue. So, if you are playing solo queue, Evelyn, you have constant pressure over the enemy team. Especially if you are towards the lower elos as well, people don't tend to ward with control wards that much. Evelyn does force that out, so they have to spend money on the control wards. That's gonna like kind of set them back a little bit more as well. So the overall pressure you have by just being Evelyn is already really good. And also she's a very good assassin, very good mage jungler as well. And yeah, overall I would highly recommend playing Evelyn. She's a lot of fun. And yeah, let's just get right into the runes. So the runes on Evelyn, are very straightforward. You start with the uh, electrocute rune. Electrocute right now is the best one you can go for. It used to be Dark Harvest, but Dark Harvest right now is just way too bad of a rune to actually be a thing. So Electrocute for just early burst damage and just helps you like one-shotting people. You're looking to get this to just scale through the game and then Dark Harvest doesn't matter anymore. Now, if you are very, very hard smurfing on the enemy team, then Dark Harvest is still the better choice because it does scale better, so it's like... It is more consistent, but it's less like burst damage, if you, like, if you know what I'm saying. After that, sudden, sudden impact on Evelyn is pretty much a no-brainer. It's after exiting stealth, and you pretty much always constantly are exiting stealth, so you can get the extra lethal or magic penetration from that. Then Eyeball Collection, just for more ability power, and I go Relentless Hunter here. The reason you want to go Relentless Hunter is for that extra out of combat movement speed. This helps you roam the map a lot, a lot faster. If, however, this, like, for some reason doesn't work for you, you can also go with Ultimate Hunter, or if you prefer this. This is by far the best choice because of roaming speed, but Ultimate Hunter does work very well on Evelyn as well because of her ult cooldown being lowered, and her ult gives you, a, like, her ult, her ult gives a lot. So it's very worth to have a lower ult cooldown as well if for some reason you do not like this, but I would highly recommend Relentless Hunter. And then onto the secondary tree, you have the Absolute Focus, since with Evelyn's passive and her invisibility, her HP can be very high at all times. So you can easily get the 70% health uh, like threshold. And then you follow that up with a water walking to make sure you run around the map faster as well. With that 25 move speed through the river. And then also like 1v1 people or catching them in the river as well is going to be a lot easier with water walking too. Now for the other runes, you want to go to double adaptive force. It gives you the most ability power. Evelyn scales very well off of ability power. And right here you go for the HP one, because more HP on Evelyn is what you want. It means just overall surviving more. And armor magicus don't really do anything, since if you are caught out, you don't have your ultimate, you're pretty much dead anyway. So right there, HP. Now, for the item build, you have the Hunter's Talisman as a starting item and a refillable potion. It's a very like common start. On Evelyn, you're using a lot of spells, hitting a lot of monsters with those spells, so Hunter's Talisman is by far the best one. You want to rush into the uh, Blue Smite Runic Echoes Enchant as fast as possible. This gives you 80 ability power, 10 CDR, like, it gives you very, very good stats. You want to get the Blue Smite one because, I mean, you're not really looking to auto attack with the Red Smite and just slowing people. It, If you charm someone in it and then slow them, you can rock to them a lot faster and then you can get your Qs or your Es on them to charm them and then one shot them a lot easier. So this is the one you want to go for, for sure. Now your boots option is a very straightforward, you just want to get Sorks. Magic Pen on Evelyn is a big, big deal, she has a lot of high base damages. So the more magic penetration you have, the more effective you are going to be. Now on your first back, actually that's something I want to note on Evelyn because it's a very like special first back. Dark Seal is a very good item, so your first back kind of want to look something to get something like a Dark Seal with boots. You can, it's only 650 gold, it's not that much. But a Dark Seal is a very worth it item because if you skill or like if you um, snowball hard enough on Evelyn, you can even opt to go for a Magius out of this Dark Seal. And you are just one shotting people left and right. Also, the extra healing from potions is very worth it and 100 mana too. So, this item in general only costs 350 gold, but it does give you a lot of, like, a lot of valuable stats. So, on Evelyn, this is a very like good potion to pick up and I would. I would recommend going for a potion. What am I saying, dude? Just a good item in general. I tend to go for this first back if I don't have like some major item completed or something like that. So first back Dark Seal. Now Magic Pen, again here, Magic Pen in this as well. 
You can pick that up um, right here, but you can also go up, up for a Lich Bane first. Usually what I do is I tend to pick up the just straight magic pen and all like completely here. Because it get like a lot of magic pen again, Evelyn has a lot of high base damages. So the more magic pen you have, the like more true damage you're gonna do, I really. So a lot of early magic penetration is gonna help you one-shot people a lot easier. And then the Lich Bane is gonna amplify the damage because Lich Bane does proc off your E. So with that, you can just like one-shot people very easily. Now here after this item setup, you have the option of going a death cap. You can go for the Zonias 2 if you want to survive a bit more. You have the Morello upgrades from the uh, Oblivion Orb. Now, Morello upgrade is the only thing, only something when, what you want to do if the enemy team has a lot of healing. If they don't have that much healing, then you can easily sit on this Oblivion Orb for a while with the magic penetration. And you will not have to spend that extra 1500 gold into the Morello. Rather, you can spend that into a Lich Bane or into it like going for a Death Cap for more ability power or something like that. That's going to be more worth it then. You also have the Void Staff right here, but usually what you do if you are like after your Lich Bane, you're trying to go for a Death Cap because then this is going to up your ability power a lot. And with that, follow that up with like a Void Staff and you can upgrade this into a Merle if they have the healing. If at this point in the game they don't really have that much healing, you can sell the Oblivion Orb and get a Zonias into that as well to just help you survive even better. You can then assassinate someone in the enemy team, press your ultimate, and maybe if they still dive in you, Zonias is going to help. Or you can just try to assassinate someone without your ultimate and press Zonias and then maybe bait with Zonias ult, and then that way you can kill them too. So this is generally your full build for Evelyn. If you guys have any questions on this build, make sure to ask those in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer those questions for you. And yeah, let's just get right into the gameplay section now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I am playing Evelyn, of course, into a Kha'Zix. Now, this matchup for Evelyn isn't the best because if Kha'Zix finds you, the chance of you actually 1v1ing that champion are very, very slim. So you want to try to farm up as much as possible to get that level 6. And after level 6, you do have a chance of actually one-shotting Kha'Zix back. Until that point, you would definitely have to be careful. Now, optimal starting path for Evelyn is always on red buff. It's just in general for jungle right now. Always the red buff start. Getting that early level advantage or just not level advantage more so. Just early level 6 or try to pressure for level 6 as fast as possible. Evelyn is very important. And that's why starting red into uh, Krugs is the best path, because that gives you the most experience. I'm just standing here taunting. Let me just um, put the Fog of War actually to the wrong side. There you go. Now, of course, the most likely start for K6 as well is red buff, since red buff is just the best start in general. The... Camp Evelyn has the most trouble with is the first camp, the initial camp, if you don't have your um, like level 2 yet. Because as soon as you get your level 2, you get your taunt, and then killing the camp becomes a lot quicker and easier. You get the magic pen, you get just the insane burst that it also gives you there. So that becomes very easy after that. As you can see, just basic clearing, I go from red to Krux. I see the, uh, the K6 on this ward right here. It's very important in this current meta to just make sure both sides are warded now on this side not warded for some reason but right here warded if you have both of scuttle wards then you can see if what the enemy jungler does and that's going to give you a lot of information so if you see the k6 here i can then opt to go for this both side jungle if i want to or i can still do this if i see the k6 here so i just saw the k6 there so i opt to instantly go and move hello Instantly go and move towards his bolt side whilst he clears my top side jungle, which is fine, vertical jungling. But that's why those wards are very important, because that this pretty much allows you to do this and allows you to see this. If you do not know this, then it's going to be very, very difficult for you to uh, jungle properly. Wrong button. So after I cleared this entire bolt side with the scuttle crab, I opt, because the bolt lane is pushing forward, to just go towards this bolt side and make sure I can try to get a gank off here. So I just walk in, Charmed Illusion. I try to, I want to really get his, him down as fast as possible right there. He flashes, I get the charm on him, and he does kill me back, sadly. The Thresh and Illusion had a lot more up than I initially thought, so then that's really how I died. It doesn't really matter since I did get a kill on Lucian, and even though he killed me back, he's going to get 
uh, he, he's gonna miss a lot of this farm right here because he can easily be frozen outside of the turret by the Jenna if she does opt for it. I'm not sure if she will, but this it pretty much means that bot lane can be frozen from now on, and then um, yeah, Lucian can lose a lot from that. It looks like here, as you can see, Jenna tried to freeze it, Thresh played it very well in staying here and actually breaking the freeze, so it did, st did still go in turret range, which means. It cannot be frozen here forever, but it's still a pretty decent freeze if they can keep it. Oh. Just, uh, yeah. So, I see Fizz here. He is very low and overextending. I probably would have asked the Riven if there were any wards, and I, I don't see any, so I just... I mean, I don't have anything to clear anyway since I ran topside, and Kha'Zix cleared my topside jungle. So I just walk into the lane, land the um, charm first, and then I just flash it on him to press E just to get the charm off. As soon as you charm him, he's dead guaranteed. There's nothing you can do with E escapes or anything like that. So if you get the charm, you can try to hit it with Q, but against someone like Fizz with that like really, really irritating escape, just pressing E, you might as well just try to flash on him or something and just get him down really quickly. Like trying to chase and risking maybe a Kha'Zix being top in as well is also not that worth it, so yeah. Now, because uh, the Fizz does not have his teleport up, we just put a uh, like, fresh for top lane in, and uh, that allows the Riven to back as well without having to use her teleport. Now, back here, my bot side jungle is spawning again, so I'm just running towards that as, as fast as possible, really. I will be hitting level 6 very, very shortly here, so it's very important that you just go for that as well. If you hit level 6 as Evelyn you, Evelyn, you get your invisibility, and that's where your real game actually starts. Like the ganks I did get in the early game here were, I mean, they, they worked out. I still got two kills out of them, but it's not that effective of ganking because you don't really have a gap close and they can quite easily walk away from your charm in most situations. If you don't have anything to do, though, definitely make sure to still gank because it's always worth just ganking if you have nothing else to do. Now here I hit level 6, so this is really where my game starts. If the Kha'Zix kind of shows up too long or something, I can just go on him. I didn't want to charm him there. Also, that's something you gotta think of when you're charming with Evelyn. If you don't stand behind them or within the path they're gonna use to walk back to their safety, then pressing charm to try and get a gank off is gonna be very, very, like, bad, honestly. If they have an escape, they just start running as soon as they see the charm. So if you're not behind them, try to maybe wait with your charm until after you can get a good position, or if you just have the damage without your charm to maybe kill them. All right, here, just doing red buff. Just making sure that my camps are going to be on cooldown as much as possible. Getting all the farm and experience is very, very important. Evelyn, you skill very well with experience and just levels in general. So it's very, very worth it to just keep going for that. I right, hear top side again. My camps are just up. I'm looking for that just to clear them. And after this, I can easily go with my invisibility to just gank top lane. There's a control word for my team, for my Riven in this, in this brush. So I know there's no control word for him. And I don't really necessarily care about normal wards, but control wards are the big thing here, so I don't see one. Fizz goes back in a little bit too forward, and I really just, I kill him. Now, because Fizz died, we just push this out. Fizz doesn't really have a way to get back to the wave. We can get a lot of turret plating. This is very important for you guys to remember as well. If you kill a laner... And turret plating is still up. Try to maybe get one or two turret platings. It's worth a lot, a lot of gold. If you're doing it with two people, it's worth 80 gold each. If you're doing it by yourself and your laner backs or died, it's 160 gold per plate. And that's going to like help you a lot in scaling. So it's very much worth it to go for as many turret platings as possible. The more turret platings you can get, like the better it is. Like 160 gold per turret plating is a lot of money. And if you can get it from top, mid and bot lane as well, if you can get those ganks off and get like two, three turret platings each turret, that is a lot of gold for you. So definitely worth just going for. That's something I had to mention right there. All right, there we get two turret platings. So that's 160 gold each for me and Riven. That's a lot of gold right there. Now Fizz instantly shows back up. I pretty much mean, I, I honestly think at this point, this Fizz is pretty tilted. Cause he just come back to lane. I just walk around, charm him, ult him, he's dead. And yeah, there's really not much he can do. I'm currently sitting on 2200 gold, so I definitely need to look towards backing very, very soon. And pick up Scuttle right here. 
Th that's the why, like, on Evelyn, that's the way you pick up Scuttle. You just charm it and then you start hitting it. You want to get rid of the armor magic resist it has and then kill it, yeah. So currently 2500 gold, which is a lot of gold. This early game is, I mean, if you can see right here, I'm 73 CS. I did get a couple of ganks off that, um, I mean, were free. My lanes were just pushed up way too far. Even if I didn't have my invisibility passive, it's just worth going for those situations anyway. Now, I saw something happening in mid lane. I did walk over from control ward here, but I just, I mean, I still see this happening on mid lane, so I might as well try to go for it. Let's see what this guy does here, actually. I let my Q too late for the charm to go off. Alright, let me just go back a bit, because... Right here, he is keeping a very nice, like, space. This is pretty much just outside of my, my Q range. I believe, I mean, if I start, if I stop to cast it, then the little bit of cast animation it has, or like the cast time it has, he will walk out of range. So this is pretty much max range of my Q. So he pretty much plays that very well. And then once I get it, once I get in range or like close enough to get him, because yeah. And then he just, it, it just disappeared. And I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, dude, Jesus Christ. I'll try that again. So I was right inside of range. The the W goes off. It like it turns off. It flies the other direction. Currently I have all my skills on cooldown, so I can't really hit him. But I'm trying to cart right next to him so that he just can't hit me with any spells and I kill him. Oh, it's a lot harder to say uh, for some reason. I don't know why. Currently sitting on a round of gold and wanted to clear that control rod right after. I did walk over it, but I saw the opportunity to gank that sway, and so I definitely went for that. Now, looking to get some camps here and maybe dive this Fizz again. I mean, he's already 1 in 4. Ganked him a lot. And right there, I, I think I'm just waiting for, uh, for, a, for a mistake. I'm currently sitting here, which, I mean, you can. But I can also just walk like past this wall and get up here to cut him off. I don't know why I just didn't do that. So I'm just sitting there. Uh, fizz... I did hit Fizz with my ultimate, but I didn't kill him. Right here, by the way, that's a very important thing to know with, note with Evelyn. If you're low HP and you get into your passive, your HP regens really fast. So if you are low with Evelyn, you don't really have to go off the map instantly. As you can see, I'm pretty much full HP again, kind of just looking for the Fizz. That's a very, very important thing you can remember on Evelyn. Because low HP doesn't matter if you can get your passive off and just walk around for that a little bit and you're pretty much full HP again. My jungle camps are up, I definitely want to look to go towards getting those as much as possible. You need that experience, you need that gold, like, it's just what's going to help you win the game. And yeah. I'm in the back here. Pick up the uh, components for a Lich Bane. As soon as I get that spike, then it really starts going. Now right, here's just some farming. Make sure my camps are on cooldown and then I can start looking for some plays again with my invisibility. I mean, honestly, that fight right there. Uh, hello? Why? Can I not follow myself? There you go. I'm looking for a situation. Fizz goes in. Which, I mean, uh, Callista just presses ult to save the support there. Support goes into the Swain. I tried to burst the Swain as fast as possible. I did not want to ult that Swain because I'm pretty sure he was already dead there. Now, here I got locked down by the Thresh very well with his hook. I get hit and ignited and I just ult to get out of that situation to make myself invulnerable for a bit. And there we pick up the Kha'Zix. Now as you can see right here again, I'm waiting for my passive before I even go back into this fight. And I regen as much HP as possible whilst I'm still sticking around. And that's already like the same situation I just explained. I was kind of low and then I pretty much got all my HP back just by just going into my passive and regening HP. Evelyn ult can be used in a multiple different ways. You can use it to execute people, you can use it to get out of situations, you can use it as a distance, as a gap closer as well if you want to get closer. So if you have your charm on somebody, you ult backwards and then get closer to the target and then start hitting them with E and all that. Not the most useful thing in general situations, but yeah, it's still very... It's an option, let me put it that way. Right here, I just picked up my Lich Bane. I gotta go back to clearing your jungle camps, get as much farm as possible. It's very important to keep those camps on a rotation because the XP it gives, it skills up. 
So if you don't clear your camps, if you leave one camp down at all times, you're just gonna lose on just a lot of experience in general. And that's not something you'd want. Right here, I'm looking for an assassination on somebody. I just look for any target that's by themselves in team fights. Go behind the enemy team. Look for targets that are low that are like walking back to their base. And that, that's really how you want to play team fights as Evelyn's. Try, try to stand behind the enemy team. Maybe get an engaged with like a good charm or like a good ult chunk or something. And yeah, just, just be patient. If you're not patient on this champion and you try to go in first, you can easily get one shot. I mean, sure, in a lot of situations you can still get the um, like the one sh like the one shot back or maybe just a kill and then get out. But you have a lot more pressure by the enemy team not knowing where you are and you're standing just behind them waiting for lower HP targets to walk back and you can just insta give them with like one E or maybe a Q. And then with your ultimate you can chunk the entire enemy team. If they get low or get like, yeah. It, it is a very big threat for Evelyn to just be, be behind the enemy team. Walk over their vision if they don't have like only control wards placed and you can just get a positional advantage like that easily. Kind of here just chilling with Riven, seeing a situation where she might get ganked because she was quite low. So that's what I was waiting for. As you can see Riven is very low so someone would highly is highly likely to react to that. And Kha'Zix indeed was. Right there I pretty much just instantly delete the Kha'Zix since I am 7 in 1. I'm 130 CS as well. I'm very much ahead of that guy. I am probably like maybe two levels up. I thought he was level 11. Here again looking for that position on the Swain. Making sure that like I can get a flank on him and just charm him. And he doesn't really have an escape that way. Whilst Callista was hitting the Rift Herald. Pick that up. We back. I go for the Oblivion Orb for more magic penetration here. And just back to clearing. The more like the more far like the more jungle camps you clear, the higher level you're gonna be, the more of a threat you're going to be, and the better you're just gonna be off in just in your general games. Again, all my camps are on cooldown, so I'm then looking to go back onto the map to make some plays. Kind of standing out of vision range there and looking for like a play that I can kill somebody with. Thresh goes in, I just press E on him and press ultimate and he gets killed. The ultimate at Evelyn does a lot, a lot of damage, and yeah. Now right there, I go a little bit too aggressive. I killed a Swain, but I could not get the Lucian. I killed a Swain with a with the jungle item proc there, and the Lucian healed on me, so I yeah, he had too much HP for me to actually kill him, and I died to that. Skip a bit through my death. There you go, pick up the Morello, heal, healing reduction right there is very important here against like their team pretty much, they have a lot of healing. And right now I'm just gonna go and position myself in a, like, in a way as you can see to where I am behind the enemy team. So my team is standing about here, the enemy team is going for this turret and I'm making sure that I can flank them from this side. So right here I am going to look to be behind them. I'm just gonna look for plays on this Lucian right here. As soon as I'm behind them, I press my W. Everyone that gets like W like this, that gets the charm on them, tends to walk back towards safety, quote unquote safety. Since you are standing behind them, this is really the death trap, but he's walking backwards to try and avoid Evelyn. All right there. Kha'Zix makes a very nice block on that, so that's kind of annoying, but I still get the smite and everything on Lucian, and I just ult him to make sure he dies. He was worth a lot of gold, so it's worth me ulting him to just ensure his death and make sure I live through that as well, since he does have a lot of damage. But again, that position right there, make sure you do something like that before you press your W, because you want to ensure that you can get there and um, yeah, whilst they then run back to safety, you're there and you can kill them. Now here, just fizz, I mean... Really at this point I am so insanely strong with all the kills I have and just the farming that I kept up in general that there's really no 1v1ing me, especially for a 3 and 9 Fizz. I mean it's still an assassin and he still does a good chunk of damage but yeah realistically doesn't win that. As soon as I get the charm of an E him he's dead instantly. Okay I'm looking to get the positional advantage on him to yeah right there. The walking, kind of walking trying to walk behind him again. But then the Thresh was walking right next to him as soon as he got charmed. And Thresh made a very clean hook on me there. So I had to ult out pretty much instantly before I could actually kill him. 
you see the general idea on how you want to play Evelyn though. You want to stay off to the side as much as possible and then look to flank behind the enemy team to then get your positional advantage off to one shot one of the carries with a charm and you just bait them towards you and then that's the way you want to do it. With the Kha'Zix, we're turreting to an 860 CS which is very very nice. You can go for a Baron right here. Now I'm pretty sure my smite's on cooldown here, yeah I used that earlier. But with Evelyn you can also do this right here, you can smite with your ultimate, it does a good chunk of damage. Uh, right there I believe the damage was about 770. So, I mean, usually with Callista, you would imagine that the Callista could smite it, but she used her proc very, very early. So I had to make a choice. I didn't have my smite up right here, so I had to make a choice, and as you can see, I just ult it. I only hit it for 472, looks like, but I did get the Baron with that ultimate. So I tried to smite it best I could with just not having my smite up. That's another use for Evelyn ultimate, and by the way, if you are just using Evelyn ultimate to smite, or to smite steal like a Baron or something, you can flash into the pit, or maybe use a plant into the pit. And then you can press ultimate and at the same time you can press smite as well. So you press ult first, then smite. And then the burst is gonna go at the exact time together. And you can then smite for a very, very big damage smite. So let's say if you have a decent amount of ability power, you can late game with like a about 1000 hit smite. You can smite it at around 2k HP and that's a lot for the enemy juggler to deal with. Pretty much nearly impossible for them to outsmite that. So it's a very easy smite still. Now here, I'm again looking to be behind the enemy team as much as possible. Lucian does heal the Kha'Zix there for him to live, actually. I'm looking at this right now, but... So I was looking to be in a good position again behind the enemy team for them to walk into me. Now right here, I didn't want to just jump on the Kha'Zix because my ultimate's on cooldown since I used that on Baron. So I have to play it a little bit more safe. And I saw the Garth's ult come down, so I was like, alright, um, this might just not do enough damage. Now I do have my smite up here. My smite does a good chunk of damage, 153 damage pretty much. So I was like, alright, I'll just walk up to him. And I smite him to give myself away. I do give myself away, but then the Lucian presses heal here to save the Kha'Zix from like pretty much Karthus ult right there. And I didn't get the kill either, so that's kind of unfortunate. But again, I'm looking to position myself with the invisibility into their base between... Like I'm trying to pinch for the enemy team between me and my team. If you can get that position on Evelyn, that's the way you want to play it. So pretty much this game, it's just it comes down on Evelyn to just farm to level six as fast as possible, put as met like as much pressure on the map with your invisibility as you can. Try to just gank as much as possible. A lot of lower elo people, especially, have a lot of trouble dealing with Evelyn. So I'd highly recommend her as a champion to climb with as well. And if you then go to the mate the late game stages, you want to position yourself behind the enemy team, pincer them in. And then that way you can win team fights very easily on Evelyn as well. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button below. If you have guys have any questions as well, make sure to put those in the comments below too. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.